Hello, so after afternoon tea um, and the lovely cake that we just had, I'm Sarah, I'm from the Royal Shakespeare Company and my job is to look at the past, the present and the future and imagine a world for artists and enable artists to thrive with the technological change that, that we're in. Um, to quote another UK cultural icon, um, David Bowie, um, Tomorrow belongs to those who see it coming and to celebrate how theatre makers have always innovated with technology. Candlelight was a technology, electricity has been a technology and um, now motion capture, photogrammetry, volumetric capture are technologies that aren't... Um, aren't new in terms of the thinking around innovation and, and uh, theatre, but what they are is um, extending the theatre making toolkit. They're extending the possibilities around how storytellers and theatre makers can tell those stories for now. And the great thing about Shakespeare's plays is they've been around 400 years, so they, we know they're pretty robust. And why they're robust is because of the humanity and the characters and what those plays say to every generation that they are put in front of. But it's the makers of each generation and what they want to say that's really significant. So looking at 5G and the technological infrastructure of what that means, I'm looking at it from not necessarily just a technological standpoint, but actually a statement of intent around distribution and looking at content and distribution working together synchronistically. But also we've been in the 21st, 20th century where broadcast models have thrived and actually theatre in this space is tremendously exciting. This is Mark Courtley from uh, a performance of the a rehearsal for the performance of The Tempest that we did in 2016 in collaboration with Intel and the Imaginarium Studio. And we, for the first time, put a real-time digital avatar on stage using motion capture technology. The technology was moving so quick at the time um, that we were able to iterate because when you land a piece of theatre, it's press night, which is the day of the show. And we were able to move with the changes of technology then. But what we didn't do with this piece is we um, stream it or distribute it beyond what that stage was. But what we did is we turned that technology and that motion capture suit into this, into a beautifully performed piece of work, which didn't, wasn't a language of motion capture to our audiences, but actually 21st century puppetry. And it's also looking at, as we use new terms like 5G, how in our language, it might be something completely different and we need to find how we use the language of artists and technologists coming together. Because if you put technology in the hands of artists, unexpected and unimaginable things can happen. So our focus in 2016 has been the stage, but the possibilities now as our stages are everywhere. Home entertainment systems are not just in a theatre space. They're here, they're on your mobile phone, they're in shopping malls, they're in um, myriad spaces. And we believe that we can place theatrical performances in all of those spaces together. And that's led us to a collaboration with Magic Leap. And for the first time uh, last year at their LeapCon conference, we launched Seven Ages of Man. Uh, Rob Gilbert, the performer, and Jessica Curry, the composer, we captured Rob through volumetric capture and um, he performed the piece Seven Ages of Man. Now, the data that we need to do that has been prohibitive until now and is only expanding and emerging. Um, and you can have that performance through a Magic Leap device anywhere you like, at home, on your tabletop. But it's the real-timeness that's really significant about theatre because theatre is all about shared experiences. And how can we create real-time performance connected and people feeling connected on all those different storytelling platforms and devices so that's led us in to a collaboration uh, which we have put together that is not just looking at theatre now, but live performance, which is part of the audience of the Future Demonstrator and is a 15 um, partner collaboration working with not just theatre, but the Philharmonia Orchestra, Punch Drunk, Marshmallow Laser Feast, Manchester International Festival. And we're, so we're looking at all the aspects of what you need to create a real-time performance on multiple stages distributed at the same time, requiring a pipeline such as 5G, pushing the boundaries of what's possible currently and looking at not only 
the capture, but the sound, the audiences that are in the space and the digitally made work, but also the real time performance and the fidelity that you're able to get now. One of the possibilities that we saw with The Tempest was a thousand people come to see a show every night in Stratford. But for one day only, we did a Snapchat filter where you could aerialise your face. Ariel was the character that we motion captured in real time. And as you can see up there, that's his face. We reached 7.5 million people in one day UK only. And my question is, what do you do with that? How does theatre own that space? How do we put meaningful content in a widely distributed framework? And how do we move from a linear broadcast model to a multifaceted, rich, matrix, digital, distributed framework so that the performance that you might see on your mobile phone is not a three-hour performance of Shakespeare. It's possibly a three-minute captured performance that is absolutely magical on your mobile phone. But how does it take you away from this being an ordinary piece of technology to a magical stage of wonder that disrupts and disjoints your day? One of those things is about ritual. One of those things that we don't talk about with new innovation is how we look at all the rituals and things we do and behaviours that we have when we have an, go to the theatre and how those are absolutely essential when we're making content in these new forms, on these new stages, distributed um, with audiences that may never see each other but want to feel connected. I can guarantee you, if you've been to the theatre recently, you may have met your friend that you haven't seen for six months and they've got a ticket to a show and you're sat there waiting for them because they're late, because the tubes are late and you've got a very dry, uh, warm glass of white wine waiting for them in the bar. And they rush in and um, it's all a rush, rush, rush and they've come from their day and you're slightly stressed because they're late and the tannoy comes in and everyone has to go in the theatre like this. And you're all coming in and you've got the weight of the day and your bag, you've got your bags and your coats and the tannoy says, can you please turn off your mobile phones? And being paranoid, you know you've turned off your mobile phone already, but actually you test it again because you don't want to be the person that's mobile phones go off. And you sit there and the lights go out. And then it changes. You're together. And there are rules that theatre makers and artists have put in front of you that you will accept. And that is a craft and a ritual that has happened for centuries. And in these new fractured forms, in these places where we're putting content, in particularly in real time uh, spaces, with the challenge around 5G, my prediction is that if you put artists in the place where you're innovating these infrastructures and pipelines, I can guarantee you something spectacular and unexpected will happen. That's my prediction.